Hello and welcome to this week's edition of What's Up Warriors. I'm Josh. I'm Joe. we got a great show lined up for you today featuring a number of things involving holidays and other school events. During the winter seasons, here are many activities to take part in. you got dinner, grandmas, you got to go shopping, cooking, and all that fun stuff. But where's the fun? And just go and enjoy yourself. Pittsburgh and the surrounding areas have many enjoyable places to visit. We want to find out a little more about these local activities. I'm here at PPG Place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Behind me is a 2,000 square foot ice skating rink, believe it or not, which is bigger than Rockefeller Center. There is a 60 foot Christmas tree, and this place is a hot spot for couples, families, or just yourself. The ice rink was designed by IKM Incorporated and first opened in December of 2001. In case you can't skate, PPG offers CA lessons for all ages and all ability levels. Have you guys ever been to PPG? Yes, I have. Yep, once last year. Why do you guys enjoy coming here? I just love Christmas, Josh. It's my fave. Hey, who doesn't love Christmas? I mean, there's a Starbucks over there, so yeah, it's next to Chipotle. Pretty good lifestyle. I mean, come on, what more would you want? Admission is $8 for adults, children to seniors is $7, skate rental is $3, and on Monday and Thursday, it's open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to midnight, and Sunday, noon to 8 p.m. Why do you enjoy coming here? Because it's fun. You get to see the Winter Garden and all the beautiful Santa Clauses from around the world, as well as ice skate with all your friends. How has PPG evolved since you were here? Well, 30 years ago, PPG wasn't here. The ice skating rink wasn't here. The buildings weren't here. I worked for Westinghouse down the street, and this is just brand new within the last 20 years or so. During the winter seasons from November through March 1st, this one-of-a-kind outdoor ice skating rink transforms between 3rd and 4th Avenue. If you're ever in a mood to go ice skating, come on down to PPG and get your ice skating on. My next stop brought me to the Overlease Country Christmas in the Westmoreland County Fairground. I'm here at Overlease Country Christmas with Stephanie, the Executive Director. Stephanie, this is a 59-year tradition. How's it like here? Well, as you said, this has been 59 years, 20 years here at the Westmoreland Fairgrounds, and we are delighted to be able to help create holiday memories and traditions for thousands upon thousands of visitors that happen to visit us every year. Christmas Village and the light display features roughly 2 million lights. Over 1.5 miles of fencing guide visitors through lights and Christmas Village. Every display viewed at Overlees is conceived, designed, and constructed on site, usually by volunteers. Stephanie, what can you experience out here in Christmas Village? Oh my goodness, there's there's lots of things to do from uh, seeing the model trains at Hartman Station to grabbing a, a char grilled hamburger and hot dog from the country kitchen and some hot chocolate to some country kettle corn to sweets, homemade fudge and chocolates in the sweet shop. Don't forget there's Henny Hemlock, the talking Christmas tree, excuse me. After a stroll around Christmas Village, you gotta try the food. I'm here with Randy. Randy, you gotta tell me about this food. Uh, it's some of the best food you can get. Uh, these burgers um, are the best frozen burgers on, you can buy. Um, we can go through up to five cases of these in one night, um, Friday and Saturday nights. There's 80 burgers to a box, so um, that, that tells you how good they are. Um, and people come back for more. Overlease is open from November 21st through January 1st, and gates open at 5.30 p.m. Overlease is an old-fashioned Christmas tradition since 1956. You know, they told me the food is just as good as the lights. You know what? I think they're right. Reporting from Overlease Country Christmas, I'm Josh Pichowski. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Josh. Last year, Penn Trafford had great success in winter sports. The team that stood out the most was the girls' basketball team. With the great success of the team and the high expectations from the student staff, I sat down with some of the team to reflect on last year and a preview of what's to come this year. Co-section champs, Whitfield champs, and a great 20-7 and seven record are three things to summarize the past season of Lady Warrior basketball. I sat down with some of the team to talk about last year and this upcoming season. Last year, uh, we lost 18 years the year before that, so we weren't expected to accomplish much. It was kind of looked at as like a rebuilding year for us. Um, last season was a lot of fun. We did really good in the regular season, and then we won with Fields last year. 
Last season was a pretty good run. I mean, we shared the section, so this year our goal is to win it outright. Last season, of course, was tremendous, as is evidenced by the case behind me, and we had great success, but it was last season, and we have to move on. Um, us four seniors, Emma, Katie, me, Maria, have been playing basketball together since fourth grade. We mesh really well. We know each other's strengths. We know each other's weaknesses, and we've always had fun playing together. We are really close still, off and on the court, and I think we play really well together as a group. We might have the best senior group that's ever come through Penn Trafford. Uh, we have four seniors who have contributed so much to this program, and I'm sure that they would like to make their senior year as great as it can possibly be. Important factors would be starting strong and not letting the other team get an upper hand on us like we did in the Whitfield Championship. Together as a group, just like last year, we were pretty close. So hopefully the freshmen will feel comfortable this year. Um, we have a lot of new freshmen this year, so I think we'll be a lot faster. We have a lot of new people that are going to contribute, and it's still going to be fun. We have like we only lost one girl, so it'll still be a good season. I'm looking forward to playing Norwin and Hemfield, obviously, because there are huge rivals, and um, they're usually doubleheaders with the boys, so it's a lot of fun, and there's a big crowd, and also not lose to Norwin. We're looking forward to playing Hemfield, Norwin. We'd like some revenge on. North Allegheny, and pretty much everyone. We are not taking this season lately. Uh, this year's team will have a new personality, and it will take on its own characteristic based on our opponents. Uh, but it should be a great experience again this year. We expect big things from this group. So our number one goal is to make it to states and make it farther than we did last year. We're going to take it game by game this year and play every opponent our best. Keys to success this year. Uh, things like playing consistently, not beating ourselves, uh, doing the things that our talent allows us to do, um, and being able to impose our will on our opponents as often as we possibly can. The girls' season is underway, and over holiday break, they will have a tournament at Penn Hills on December 27th, 29th, and 30th, and they will return home against Connorsville on January 5th. Should be a great season of Penn Trafford Lady Warrior basketball, and uh, of course, we appreciate the continued support of the student body uh, and of everyone at Penn Trafford. Uh, so come on out, support us. It's going to be another great year, and hopefully uh, we add another championship and can wear another ring at the end of this year. This is Joe Beers reporting for What's Up Warriors. Back to you guys in the studio. One, two, three, four. 2015 is approaching quickly, which means surprises of the new year will be upon us before we know it. Thanks to our best friends at Sony, we got able to get a sneak peek of what is to come in the world of gaming in 2015. We go to Mike Butcher for some more. Twenty years ago, on December 3rd, 1994, Sony Computer Entertainment released the original PlayStation game console. Sony recently celebrated 20 years of PlayStation with the very first PlayStation Experience, a two-day community event dedicated to showing off new games and revealing all new titles. This rundown will cover some of the most notable moments of the keynote. Sony kicked off the keynote with a 15-minute gameplay demo of Naughty Dog's upcoming action-adventure game, Uncharted 4. The demo showed off stunning visuals and featured all the classic gameplay Uncharted is known for. Players will be able to utilize a few new tools, such as a climbing pick and a grappling hook, which can be used in combat and for standard traversal. Nolan North returns to voice main character Nathan Drake, and Troy Baker, the voice of Joel from The Last of Us and Pagan Men from Far Cry 4, once the cast to voice Drake's older brother, a new character to the series. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End will hit stores in 2015. Since the release of the PlayStation 4, numerous games have been ported or remastered to the console. That trend continues with The Forest, a first-person open-world survival horror game. Players must survive on an island after your plane crashes by creating shelter, weapons, and other objects. There are no missions or objectives, but you might want to try to protect yourself from the tribe of mysterious mutants that inhabit the island. There was no word on a release date. San Diego Studio presented the first in-game footage of MLB 15 The Show. So far, the only new features announced in next year's edition are the year-to-year -year saves, so you won't have to start your road to the show careers or franchises over anymore, licensed brands and equipment, and legends. Yasiel Puig from the Los Angeles Dodgers is featured on the cover of MLB 15 The Show, which will release on March 31st on PlayStation 4, 
PlayStation 3, and the Vita. Indie games are on the rise and the highly acclaimed Shovel Knight will be making its debut on PlayStation in 2015. The game released in June on PC, Wii U, and the 3DS and was praised for its nostalgic style and classic platforming gameplay. In the PlayStation Experience trailer, it was revealed that Kratos, the main character from the God of War series, will make an appearance in the game. I'm here with John Lang, and uh, John, what were your opinions of the keynote? Um, I think it was pretty interesting. Uncharted 4 and The Order look pretty cool for next year. Generally, everything was pretty cool that they showed off, so I'm pretty excited for 2015 in the world of gaming. For all the announcements and trailers from the PlayStation Experience keynote, go to PlayStation.com. This has been Mike Butcher reporting for What's Up Warriors. Back to you guys at the studio. The winter holidays are quickly approaching and the Christmas season is in full swing. Many different people have different traditions they celebrate with their families. Luke Plimpton caught up with a few Penn Trafford students to see just what their families do during the winter break. Christmas is a holiday that is celebrated all over the world by many different types of people from all different backgrounds. December 25th was declared a federal holiday in the United States in 1870. Since then, Christmas Day has become a steadily more important holiday in the United States. I hit the halls to talk to a couple of Penn Traverse students to see what they do during the holidays. I'm here with Brett Schutt. Brett, what do you do for Christmas Day with your family? Well, uh, we usually get up, get some presents, then uh, after that we uh, drive an hour away to Johnstown, and there I meet my old folks to eat some ham. Um, do you celebrate anything in particular on Christmas Eve? Uh, I go to my dad's mom's, and we just open presents there. The Feast of the Seven Fishes, also known as the Vigil, is a Southern Italian and Italian-American celebration of Christmas Eve with meals of fish and other seafood. The meal may include seven, eight, or even nine specific fishes that are considered traditional. The most famous dish on Southern Italians is salted cod. I caught up with Penn Traverse senior Alex Icatelli to tell us a little bit more of this celebration. Okay, I'm here with Alex Icatelli, and Alex, it's come to my attention that you did something quite interesting for Christmas Eve. Do you want to tell me what that is? Uh, my family, uh, we get together and have uh, the Seven Fishes dinner on Christmas Eve. Uh, do you want to give us a little bit more of what that is exactly? Uh, yeah, um, on Christmas Eve, we all get together uh, as a big family, and then uh, we pick seven fishes, and we uh, enjoy a nice meal. And then come Christmas, we have our Christmas meal together, too. Okay, thank you very much. This has been Luke Plimpton reporting. Back to you guys in the studio. That concludes our show for today. We hope that everyone enjoys their weekend. In the wise words of the Backstreet Boys, Merry Christmas uh -huh. and Happy Holidays. And remember, Santa can see you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. So I'm Josh. I'm Jeff. From everyone here at What's Up Warriors, we hope you have a great holiday break, and we'll see you in 2015.